The Shift Podcast, Perspective and Our Power to Change, invites us to expand our lives by changing the lens we see through. Is something different calling you? Do you ever ask yourself, is this all there is? Or have you forgotten why you're even here? Trish and Diane create insightful and empowering conversations about connecting the self, soul, nature, and community. Navigating life by choice rather than circumstance is how we make the shift to expand our humanity. The shift starts now. Welcome in, everybody. This is Diane McClay on the Shift Podcast with Trish Campbell, and we are so happy that you made the choice to be with us today. It's Flannel Friday, but it's also Reframe Friday. And as always, Trish and I, especially in the month of November, which is the month that we consider in America as Thanksgiving month and Canadian Thanksgiving, it's also the month of uh, American National Heritage Day. And one of the ways that we like to reframe the Fridays is we look at things from a different perspective and we invite you to do the same. So as we open our show today, I really want to call your attention to not just the sales that go on after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, which is what we traditionally have been taught to focus on, or even the thanks that we give with our friends and family around a sumptuous meal, which is what we've been taught to do. But as we approach this season of thanks, I would really like to call attention to the native tribes in America and the indigenous people in Canada, who basically this is essentially um, a time of mourning for their people because of the genocide, because of that, because of how people before us treated them. And I don't wanna be completely negative, but I don't wanna be blind and ignore that this is a dark side of our um, pilgrimage history. It's a dark side of our progressionism that that just typically gets swept under the rug. So in our normal format, we wanna call out to the elders, to the spirits, to the people that came before us, the stewards of the lands in which we currently reside, the stewards of the practices and the agriculture that feed us today. We wanna honor you, whether you're a named or unnamed person, We want to thank you for the sacrifices you have made to allow us to be where we are today. And we call upon every listener to look at things from a slightly different perspective. Trish, bring it in. Thank you for making that acknowledgement and for um, honoring in that way um, the land, the inhabitants that came before us. And I will say that it is yeah, a part of our history we can't ignore. And it's not just a part of our history, it's still ongoing because the impact and the trauma, of, you know, the impact of the trauma is still ongoing. So it's something that, you know, yeah, not to be negative, this isn't negative, this is bringing to light things that we're not always maybe conscious of or, or giving attention to that is not to say, you know, honoring all the ways we have traditionally is bad, but it's also once we know more, it's we can incorporate, integrate that into, into our day, into our practice, into our being. So I, I so appreciate that. Um, I'm so um, grateful to be having this conversation. We're kind of, you know, having this conversation around um, like overall looking at the things that we do, how we operate in our lives and um, that it's okay to question and be curious and to not just keep doing what we've always done. I mean, you know, the, you mentioned the Black Friday sales and all that, like over the years, you know, the, the um, holidays have become more and more about material and pulling us away from what's inside of us, the spiritual, the the energy of everything. And so I think that's what we're going to talk about today is, you know, going back into curiosity, questioning, you know, why we're doing what we're doing, maybe opening up to new perspectives on, on ourselves, on our connection to each other. And um, one thing that's uh, present for me right now is healing. And healing um, is, is something that I think is present in a lot of people's lives, just because we've been in this period of kind of being forced to come back to ourselves. So um, 
healing, I want to say is like, we are all healers. We, and we don't realize it maybe, but we have that our bodies have the ability to heal themselves. So, um, and it's like looking at it from that perspective of that. We don't have to, you know, always look outside of ourselves for that. It's, it's within us. Um, well, and that's a, that's a reframe, right? I mean, yeah. we, we are, so again, I really, I really want this to sink in with listeners. We are making Fridays reframe Fridays, right? And, and let's pull the word nerd out, right? To frame something means to shape it, to fashion it, to form it, to put it into use according to a pattern, to put it together, to compose something or to box something in. Frame of reference is using fixed points of lines, fixed in math, it's fixed reference points, that it's a known point that we can always uh, speak to or speak from. But when we talk about reframing, it actually means about doing it again, right? Mm -hmm. And it might mean tearing the original structure down and rebuilding something like people might do in a bathroom remodel. I'm thinking about that right now as I stepped yeah. in a puddle of water this morning, right? But it could also mean just taking parts of something and changing our reference point or changing our perspective and just broadening our view. And so Native American Heritage Month is Thanksgiving month. So what if we just said, hey, November is Native American Heritage Month and one day of the month is dedicated to being thankful and the other 29 days of the month are, uh, we're gonna be curious about uh, Native cultures from whatever areas that we're in, right? Mm -hmm. What if we did that? So yeah. when you talk about curiosity, I think it starts with the what if question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. And it's, yeah, so it's, it is what if, like, what, what if we tried something different? Um, you and I were talking about like all the things we've discussed and how, how different it was, like, let's say 20 years ago, um, like things like, you know, healing our bodies, uh, meditation, coming back to us, like none of that was mainstream. And now like everybody's doing it. And that's how we get there. That's, you know, I, I'm a Reiki practitioner. Um, and, there was a time, well, I didn't know what it was. And then when I knew what it was, and, you know, there might be people that know what Reiki is, but still, you know, had only heard of it. And, and, you know, it was something that people, even if they'd heard of might not believe in, but now as we're, as more and more people are asking what if and opening up to be curious and trying new things. I mean, that is um, how we've gotten to this, like meditation being mainstream and mindfulness being mainstream and, you know, gratitude as a, as a foundation for the way of living and for, for a lot of us now. So that is why, you know, and that is part of like what we're talking about on our, um, on the shift is in making the shift is, is um, coming from that place of being curious. And then once we are, we have the awareness, we can make different choices or we can make new choices or, you know, right. open up the possibilities. Well, you know, this is, this is a good setup conversation. So um, one, I want to go back to a story as you're talking about healing and mm -hmm. what was mainstream, what was not. I, I want to relate something that I think connects us to where we've been and where we're going. Uh, but where we're going with this is that on the shift, we, we talk to healers, we talk to political people, we talk, we, we are all about trying to open and expand our knowledge base and do that for our listeners. So real quick, you talk about healers and what's in the mainstream. I remember um, being out of college and I was at a work site and I injured my back. Like literally I was laying on the floor, couldn't move at all. Never had a problem with my back before. Uh, I didn't have insurance. Um, basically I didn't know that I could afford to go to a spine specialist. I thought that I had to go to some sort of spine specialist. I had no clue. I was ignorant about the world of chiropractic care. Not only was I ignorant about chiropractic care, uh, but part of my framework that I had was that they were quacks. People mm. in my life, friends, family members, people I respected, told me that chiropractors were on the fringe of medical, of Western medicine, and I should never trust them. Now, here's the interesting thing. I called a chiropractor because I got curious. I'm like, I can't move. I'm in pain. I can't afford a specialist. I don't know what's going on. Well, at least a chiropractor has had some medical schooling, right? This is really speaks to my ignorance. I went to a chiropractor. 
I got a couple of adjustments and literally as soon as an adjustment happened, not only was the pain gone, but I could move, but my world opened up mm. because the, the chiropractor told me that, that he actually goes through more medical training than average, uh, average um, general practitioners, right? Mm -hmm. Then my world op opened up even more because I started to understand the nervous circuitry in my system, right? When my right hand tingles, it's because something in my spine is out of alignment. And I, I tell that story because literally my body came back into alignment with the help of somebody that was on the fringe, but my awareness came into alignment that there were other viewpoints, other options, other choices that were out there for me that actually could be better for me. Right. Oh my I God. Mean, that's kind of a yeah. long story, but it's sort of really poignant right about now. But it, in it, in it kind of frames it out. Like it, it, so there's so many things I want to say, but first of all, I think I, what came to mind was I, I feel like chiropractors are these, like they're secretly being, they know they're healers, but they don't like for a long time, they haven't been able to share that about themselves. Like, I just feel like there's so much about what you just said that is so true. Like what is how, what we store in the body and how that kind of care can, um, can make it such a big impact on your well-being, and so it. I mean, I, I could go so many different places, but it, from the energy work perspective, that what happened to you was not only making that adjustment for your nervous system and your nerve, like it was an, an energetic adjustment. It was releasing the energy in your body that was stored that was that was like binding you up in in pain. And, and a lot of people are experiencing that, but they're, they're seeking, um, you know, they, they do what they've always done instead of, you know, maybe there's something else alternative out there that they could explore instead of, you know, going to the doctor and get a prescription, you know, prescriptions and medications and, and pharmaceuticals have been like, you know, the, the band-aid fix all for everything, but we're not treating the root cause of the problem. And, while you were talking, I'm thinking of Dr. Brooke, our, one of our colleagues in this Cornelia Stephanie Media Group. And um, I've worked with her, I work with her, um, and but she's done, you know, I've worked, had her treat me and, you know, th there's energy work involved in there. And, you know, it's, it's something that's unseen, but it is something that is very powerful and um, speaks to the wisdom that our bodies hold. If we only would, listen to them and and to give it a chance to give something else a chance out there that that might seem like so untouchable or unreachable or un impossible it's so many you know there could be so many um answers in doing that and um i don't know there's just so many well, things like well, we're in alignment because i had the same yeah. thought i thought how lucky are we in the cornea stephanie media group yeah. How lucky are we to have many influencers, but somebody like Dr. Brooke Sheehan, who is the body whisperer, who isn't just looking at the rigidity of the body and what's physically in alignment, but who, who literally has the ability to say, yeah, there's something that's less rigid, but it still needs some reframing, still mm -hmm. needs some framework. You know, I think about reframing things and, and I think of like construction or a house and there's multiple components to what makes a house, right? You've got yeah. the foundation. If your foundation is cracked, then whatever sits above it is going to be unstable at some point in time. Your support post, your beams, the roof, right? We could draw an analogy or metaphor to any component, right? What if it just starts with, I'm going to just look at the structure and I'm going to see if it's sound enough for me, or I'm going to see if there's one thing that I can be curious about, you know, literally all I have to do is change a faucet out on a sink and put new lines in and this project will be done. But I'm literally curious now about, well, what if I change the flooring and what if I change the cupboards and uh -huh. what if I change the shower out? It's not different. Like just because I'm talking about a physical reframing project in my house doesn't mean that we can't draw the same parallel to uh, an energetic reframing in our body. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. I agree. It, it reminds me, like I'll share my personal like my framing of like how I got to you know practice Reiki and 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 just my healing journey. It started with um, feeling into like 
learning about the law of attraction and energy. And then from there, like each thing is like a, a layer or a, a brick in, in, in the foundation of healing for myself or healing that we can all do for ourselves. It's understanding the energy and then the vibration and then um, just, you know, our thoughts and all of the things. And then I heard, heard about Reiki and this is like something that, you know, you're not physically seeing anything, but you're, um, you're experiencing energy uh, travels across time and space. It's not bound by, like, we don't have to be in the same room to feel each other's energy. And so, and I personally witness that all the time in the work that I do. And then just in my, my circle of people, like when you think about somebody and then they call you, like, that's because you're on the same frequency. Well, and, and what about, have, I just did this this morning. Have you ever been in a car and you pull up to a traffic light and you're like, I'm not going to look at the person next to me. But then all of a sudden you feel somebody staring at you or conversely, have you like, I'm the person who's like, and I, you know, I'll kind of stare at somebody just long. Like I want to see how long it will take them to mm -hmm. notice that I'm staring at them. Sounds yeah. kind of weird, but that's an energetic shift. Right. When we, when we talk about healing, we're, we're talking about different layers of healing, right? Physical healing, e energetic healing, emotional healing. That's what your book, uh, Love Me, which is coming out soon. I can't wait to have mm -hmm. the conversation with you about that. But there's different layers of personal healing. And sometimes just think about it's Friday. How many of our listeners are driving home today and they're carrying a ball of stress in their gut because of mm -hmm. whatever happened at the work today? Yeah. And I'll bet you if those people literally just moved a little bit when they got home or they took a deeper breath or they physically out loud say, I'm going to let this go, I bet they would feel something different in their body. Yeah. I want to come back to what you said about emotional healing because, well, I agree with everything you just said, but um, th that something's going on inside their body. And it, I, I believe there's, you know, there's different types of healing, but it all comes back to emotional healing. What we don't realize is that a lot of our illnesses are because we have old stored emotion in our body that is, that is make, giving us this pain. It's, it's literally binding us up. It's literally weighing us down. And so it's because we thought we could get by in life without dealing with it. We thought, oh, that little experience didn't impact me. I'll just stuff it down. I have something to do. I'm going on my way to something. And then we keep stuffing and stuffing and stuffing. And eventually the body can only hold so much. And the body starts to say, hey, wait a minute. And sometimes it literally attacks itself. That's where, I mean, that's where autoimmune disease comes from. I believe it's, it's the body becomes uncomfortable. It's dis-ease within the body. So it all comes down to that, emo, you know, healing the body energy, um, emotionally, but a lot of that is that emotion is energy. So it comes back to energy and we are energy. Everything is energy. So, right. And, and let, let's, let's give kind of a, a helpful tip to our listeners right now. I know that you've written a book about self-love and mm -hmm. about healing and about awakening to transformation. What are, can you speak to one or two brief things that you've discovered in your journey when you opened yourself up to these alternative modalities or mm -hmm. these alternative ways, when essentially you basically tore down some of your old structure and started building a new structure? What have you okay. learned along the way? Um, oh, we don't have enough time for all that, but I'll- Well, that's why they have to get the book. Briefly, I know that's, everyone will have to read it in the book because I do talk about that. Um, it's like, what I learned is that when I had the courage to make the choice up to try something new, you know, when you're at a point of, um, when you're in a grieving process, you're, you're, you're willing to try anything to get yourself out of that process, out of the pain. So from- it, I was, and I know a lot of people can probably relate to that. A lot of people listening. Um, so I was like, what can I do? I, you know, so I tried all these alternative things. We talked with Naeli about that, about astrology. Astrology has helped me too. She said it saved her life, you know, in our last episode about Mercury retrograde and all the things. So for me, what I learned is when I, when I, when I made the choice to take those alternative routes 
not go, you know, traditionally what I thought I was supposed to do or what I should do, here's where shifting the shoulds, is um, it helped me. And, and, and you know what's interesting about the energy work that I, so that's when I tried Reiki for the first time. And when I did, um, I went back and I went back and then that practitioner ended up being my Reiki master. I ended up like deciding this is something I wanted to do. But what I realized was you might not feel it in the moment. You might not feel anything at all. Sometimes we're so blocked up our energy um, that we, you know, I feel nothing, you know, I, I did experience something, but it's, it's the things that you, in retrospect, you say, oh my God, after I started doing these things, my life shifted. Like, you know, people moved out of the way, people came in, things came in, new jobs happened, like oh, jobs fell away, you know, all the things that the winding road that, and you know, where I am now. And, and, and this is the, what I look back on is, is the choices I made around doing something different choosing something different than what I knew, what I thought I had to do, what I thought I should do to help myself. So I don't know if that answers your question. I mean, there's so much more I could say about. Like, well, it does. And, and honestly, there's so much more we can say. Let's, let's do the lead in. Um, this is leading up to, we have a really uh, unique and special opportunity to interview uh, Tom Palladino on November 19th. We're gonna have a one hour show on the shift. Thank you to Cornelia Stephanie for helping us coordinate that. But Tom Palladino is, is he's on the fringe, right? He's a, he is a leading a new version of healing modality that he believes is something that the world needs. And we are going to have the opportunity to talk to him firsthand mm -hmm. for 60 minutes uh, where we'll be able to ask him a bunch of questions and field some of your questions as well. But we're leading into we want to interview him because we don't know what we don't know anything about him. We don't know what he's doing, but we're curious. So what I want to what I want to tie it into is what I heard you say is I recognized I had pain. I need, I was willing to do anything to get rid of it. That's kind of like mm -hmm. me and my backstory. And then once you're willing and you find something that's positive, you know, um, not not always jumping to drugs or alcohol to dumb to. Uh, dumb down or, or nullify the pain. But if you're willing to be in the pain, but work through the pain with a set of intentions, with a guide, with someone who can help you get to the other side, you're almost always going to get to the other side. And right. the awareness and the aha comes through the journey and it comes on the outside end. Would you agree right. with that? I agree with that. It, it does not, there's no easy way around that. It's going through it. It's, you know, it, you will, you will see on the other side of it like that for me, like transformation, healing, growth, expansion, all of the things. And um, what I want to say about, I'm so excited to have that conversation with Tom, because I mean, we're going to be learning in real time with him. I do know uh, the energy piece and how energy, you know, heals from a distance, because that's a big part of my work is distance Reiki, distance energy healing. So I get that. I get that you know, so I'm very in curious about his process and um, he's very courageous. Like you said, he's on the fringe, like, you know, pushing um, the edge of this new technology, um, energetic technology, um, healing technology, uh, spiritual technology, I would say, because we are all energy. Um, so I'm so looking forward to to uh, doing what we do here and asking the questions and looking at it from an open perspective, you know, from an open mind and um, take our listeners with us on this journey. And I think that's the key, right? And, and um, just time just flies so crazy fast on the show because we get so excited and so passionate about what we're doing. But when I said the fringe, I want to make sure that I'm really clear. Like some people listening might be going, whoa, that's way too out there for me. Well, the fringe has two sides, right? There's the crazy side, which a lot of people just is, it's the unknown and I don't know about it, like how I was led to believe chiropractors were, but it's also the advancement side. Mm -hmm. Nothing in our society progresses forward without having that one person who says, I've got this crazy idea, right? right. I mean, electricity. Thomas Edison said, hey, how about if we just not have gas lit lamps and we just have lights inside our house? That yeah. was on the fringe for that time frame. So I really want to make sure that our listeners walk away with just because it's different, 
just because it sounds unusual, just because it may or may not have science uh, behind it, the way you know it doesn't mean that it's a terrible idea or that it's crazy or that it's undoable. Right. right. That's the that's the perspective shift is when you can see things it, with openness and curiosity, then your awareness starts to change and then the perspective starts to shift uh, one way or the other. Yeah, I was just trying to think of that when you said that, like there's this is what we have to understand is that it's the it's the what we coin it or say is like frame as crazy ideas or whatever. I was trying to think of the Einstein quote, if it isn't absurd, um, it's not um, worth doing or something. O only those who attempt the absurd can, can achieve the impossible. That's what it is. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's, you know, viewing this as something, yeah, we don't know about it. We don't know, but it doesn't mean we're not going to explore it. That's how we grow. That's how we expand. And we have right. this tremendous opportunity. And the key so. is to not dismiss it just because you don't know or you don't right. agree with it. Right. So, um, you know, let's let's just kind of wrap this up and tell people a little bit more how they can find more about you and I, and okay. uh, kind of our exciting news about the app. And yeah. then we'll we'll tell people about Tom when uh, next week. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, you can find Diane and I on the KS Media Group app. Go to your Apple App Store or Google Play and download the KS Media Group app. You're gonna find the world's best influencers, healers, coaches, authors, speakers, um, health practitioners, chiropractor extraordinaire, Dr. Brooke, who we mentioned is there. We're there, pod, you know, catch our ship podcast there. All the ways to connect with us in one spot, one stop right. shop. So go check that out. Right, and my last message is, is that this is November. Um, if you're really serious about looking at something from a different perspective, my call to action is check out the website nativehope.org. There's some good stories there. There's some good reminders about the other side of the Thanksgiving story. Uh, I'm Diane McClay. This is Trish Campbell. This is the pers this is the Shift podcast, and we're here to change perspective. And the shift it starts with us. Yeah, Thanks for being the shift here. Starts now. Thank you for listening to The Shift Podcast, where perspective and our power to change intersect. Slowing down to look at things from a different angle is necessary to affect positive change. You hold the power to transform yourself and your life. It is already inside you and it's within reach. Clarity comes from awareness. Momentum comes from choice. Healing, growth, and transformation happen on The Shift Podcast. The first and third Fridays at 12.30 p.m. Pacific. For more information, go to invibe.ca or dianemcclay.com.